Wow. The grave still full. Still full of purpose. Never did get this operating purpose. Because they had the mentality that I just come to church, sit in the church, and I die. All the gifts, all the talents that God has placed on you in your life, you're supposed to die with all of that gone. My God. Help us. You want to know when your time is up? Your time is up when everything that you're supposed to accomplish has been accomplished. Yes. Jesus came here. Jesus walked in dirt. Three, three years he was in ministry. Jesus said, now, my hour is at hand. When he hung there on the cross, it wasn't over until he said it was finished. It was finished when he accomplished everything. Mm -hmm. And it's not over for you until you have accomplished. You have to accomplish everything. You got to die empty. You can't get full, but you got to die empty. Thank God. Help us, Lord. Help us, help us. Graves are full of church folks with their sugar colored woods. Mm. Full of graves are full. Didn't accomplish nothing. And you're not average. That's why we don't do anything because we feel like that we're average and that we don't, we're not qualified to do it. God knew exactly what he was doing when he created you. He didn't create you average. But you listening to the wrong people. You listen to somebody average tell you that you average. Mm -hmm. Did you actually think that they were going to tell you you better than them? Mm -hmm. Did you think they were going to say that? Did you, do you actually think that somebody that don't have a, have a high school diploma would tell you that you need to go get your GED? Did you think they're going to do that? No, they ain't going to do that. They want you to be on the same level they are. You think that somebody, somebody that got their they high school diploma going to encourage you to go to college? No, they're not going to do that. They're not going to encourage you. They want you to stay where they are. We, we're not average. You, you're God's kids. You're God's child. So you're not average. God has so much that he has birthed in you that God is looking for you to I wonder when you finally going to start working. I wonder when you find, I, I, know some, I know some of you parents that got older kids in your house and wonder the same thing. When are they going to start working? When are they going to get out and get a job? When are they going to do this? God has said the same thing. I have given you everything you need on this side. You got purpose. You got you got plan. I got a plan for your life. When are you going to start working? Uh -huh. when, God just wait. When are you going to start? When are you going to come out of your comfort zone and going to start doing something? Dr. Dickinson said, we got to move. He said, you got to move. You get so comfortable being in one place. You got to move. God has called us to move. You are not going to be able to fulfill your purpose that God has for you sitting right where you are. So, this, this, this place, has, the church was never created to be a place where you can just come and hang out. It was never designed for that. Amen. But we have so many social partners in church. We're doing everything in church because we're too scared to go outside the walls. Jesus. Because ministry is not in here. How I many of you know that? Ministry is not in here. Ministry is out there. Yes, it is. You come in here to get instruction. You come in here to get taught. And I said, you go out there and work. But we want to stay in the board room. We want to stay in the classroom. I don't want to go outside the classroom. It's amazing to me. You, didn't, you, you, you stayed outside the classroom when you did school. <laughs> we we went out eating. We went out eating Tuesday night uh, after after service. That I ran into some of the crazy uh, former students, and the first thing they said, "You tried to give me, you tried to give me ten uh, ten days suspension because I wouldn't stay out the hallway." And I looked at that. I said, "Well, that's your job. Was your class in the hallway? Was your job in the hallway? No. Well, then I was doing my job. That's the problem." You came to school to go in class. Not to walk home. I tell them, I said, this is my space. When I walk down this hall, there ain't nobody supposed to be in it but me. This is my space. And so then we have the same mentality in the church that we want to stay in the church now. We don't want to go outside. That's a cruel world. I'm like, bishop. They don't vote for me out there. I can't, I can't even go out there and vote for they, they hate for a name. They, they cuss you and they do all this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
that's why we want to stay in here. We want to, we'll stay in here and ask our little question and just bind ourselves in time. When Jesus is going to come back, I'm going to buy me some time to Jesus to come back. I'm going to ask my question to Jesus and never fulfill your purpose. That's why you're so unsatisfied. Mm -hmm. Because you have yet to fulfill what God has called you. You all ain't going to, we'll never know what potential you got until you launch out. You'll never know what you're capable of doing until you launch out. You got to move from here. Now, I was a little boy and I was I don't like to go fishing. Love to eat fish. Don't like to go fishing. Mm -hmm. And I went a couple of times and I, I was watching, watching my mother and them now, now. Now I never seen anybody catch a big fish sitting down and just throwing their reel out there. I saw them guys get up and they got up, they swing back, and they swung them and reel way on out there because they knew where the big fish was. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was sitting there on the bank, I was catching them with tadpoles. On the minnows, I wasn't catching no big fish because the big fish went right there where I was. See, it, it took nothing out of me to catch the little fish. Mm -hmm. It took no effort to get the little fish. It took some effort to get the big fish. And so, we, see, you gotta understand, your purpose is not for you to be in church to just get back. Yeah. And we got those in church. I just want to fulfill my purpose just enough for me to get back. I want folks to know I'm saved. I want folks to know I'm sanctified. I want folks to know I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And some of you just come with them just knowing that. But some folks don't know what you do in church. They don't even know what ministry you own. What you're part. Because we don't do anything outside of that. Yeah. Ask yourself this question. Do anybody outside of this church, this is going to your job. Do anybody in your job know you say? Yeah. Some of you, some of you got folks in your job that know you say. Uh-huh. Let me ask you, do they do that inner circle that you hang out with know you say? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Let's go into the inner courts. Do they know you say? The reason why, because see, see, that's some folks that know you say, and that some folks don't know you say, mm -hmm. and they didn't know you were saved until you said you were saved. Because <laughs> your life never showed not one ounce of fruit, that they knew that you, your life didn't change. You can hear them whispering that. I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know they were saved. Did you know they were saved here, child? I didn't know they were saved. <laughs> If they never said anything, I would never know. I'm saying. See, you got to understand. When you operate in purpose, you ain't never got to say anything. Nothing. That's evident. That is that is a that is an aroma that is sent out from you when you operate in purpose. And you ain't got to tell nobody nothing. They already can sense there's something different about you. But you got to understand who you are first. Mm -hmm. If you never understand who you are in Christ, you'll never know what purpose, what your purpose is. And your purpose will never for you to come here and die. No. That, that wasn't God's purpose and that wasn't God's plan for you. Because if that was his purpose and the plan for you to come and die, he didn't need to make a whole lot of stuff that's already made in this earth. And that's all you want to do. I'll put you in one bedroom up. Put you, in, put you in a hut and let you be all by yourself. But that was your purpose when you come in that. You don't need no friends. You don't need to talk to nobody. You don't need to be by, by yourself. But that was never his purpose or nor his intention for the believer. God had a purpose. That that uh, that a lot. We we spend so much time in here. My our families are going to hell. We got too many folks in our families who need salvation. Who need the Lord? Too many folks. Anybody got people in their family that need the Lord? Yes, Lord. Then why are we spending too much time in here? Jesus. Your purpose is to help lead people to Christ. That's your purpose. Your purpose is to help, is to help make an impact in the lives of folks. That's your purpose. Your purpose is to be the example here on this earth that God has created you to be. That's your purpose. But then there are some special things that God has to outline in your life that he didn't outline in other people's life. And you got to understand what those things are. You got, you got to talk to God and find out what those things are. Mm -hmm. 
He was never designed to be be average. I, I told I, I was telling my my uh, my class. I talked to bishops and, and pastors uh, at this conference. I told them, I said, you know what? You know when I go to McDonald's, when I go to McDonald's, when I go somewhere, I always order something a little different. I might order the same sandwich, but they gonna have the same stuff on. So why did you do that? Because I'm not average. Reason why I said they prepared them sandwiches ahead of time for the average people. My God, come on. Some folks go there, they, they don't know how to get nothing else. They ask for the same stuff every time they go. And I said, so they go ahead and prepare. I said, when I go in, I might ask, I might ask for a quarter pounder, but I guarantee you, when I ask for a quarter pounder, I'm gonna have me some mayonnaise or something else on there that they normally don't put on there so they can make my sandwich special made. I want it fresh. Right now. I want it fresh. Yes, Lord. We got to get out of our spirit to come to church and just be an average. Mm -hmm. We can't be at we got to ask for something special. We got to position, we got to be in a position to receive something special from God. Because you are special people. And because you're special people, people, I'm not saying that to be arrogant, be, be arrogant, but you are above anything average. Because of who you are. You don't serve an average God. That was the problem the Baal dealt with last when we talked about last week. They had somebody average. Because an average person don't show up all the time. Uh-huh. But because you serve a supernatural God, and because of a supernatural God, you are you ought to be in a position where you can desire some special things because of who you are in God. Amen. Amen. So I'm not average. I'm not here just to die. That's purpose in me. That, 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 that's purpose in me. And, and I'm going to tell you, you're never going to be satisfied until you fulfill it. But this is what the devil does to us. And I'm, I'm getting ready to close. We'll repeat we'll this up next week. This is what the devil does to us. What the devil does is that since, since he knows that God has a plan and a purpose for you, and he knows that you're not satisfied doing what you're doing, the enemy always brings other things into your life to try to fill a void that only God can fill. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I mean, I folks jumping from man to man, woman to woman, job to job, career to career, church to church, because that's a void they're trying to fill. And the only way they're going to fill the void is just to do like, do like uh, uh, Isaiah said, here am I. Send me. Mm -hmm. You got to get to the point where you got to God. Sit down somewhere. Stop running so so much and say, God, here I am. I speak to me. Yes. What would you have me to do? Show me my plan, plan and purpose. Now you you've been you've been you've been saying ten or fifteen years. You still asking God to show me His purpose for your life. I got a problem with you. I got a problem. Evidently, you ain't listening. Because you shouldn't be asking God the same thing 10, 15 years. God will already show you what the problem is you just don't want to do what he shows you. Yeah, yeah. That's where the whole problem comes in. And so when you step out of the wheel and the plan that God has for your life, then you create all kinds of confusion in your life. And you're going to always try to find some type of fulfillment and you'll never be satisfied. See, what the enemy does is he gives you a temporary fix. Mm -hmm. He gives you a, a, a temporary fix to your eternal problem. You got to understand, temporary fix, a, 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 a physical temporary fix will never heal your <laughs> eternal problem. And that's what the enemy does. The enemy gives you something temporary. Mm -hmm. And when that wears off, you gotta have another hit. Yeah. You just like a junkie trying to find your purpose. So you've been created with purpose. You were born with purpose. Your purpose is not to come here and die. But your purpose is when you do call you home, you die empty. You came here fool, but you got to die empty. Because if you don't die empty, then what's going to happen? What's going to happen 
is that the only thing that people can say about you after you go is that they was a good person. Mm -hmm. That's all they're going to be able to say. Why? Because you never accomplish anything that God has for you to accomplish. Your life ought to leave a legacy behind. And we're supposed to leave a legacy of pattern for our own kids and our children's children to say, hey, when I grow up, I want to be just like my dad. I want to be just like my granddad. Mm -hmm. I want to be just like my grandma. Why? Because you have lived your life so. Mm -hmm. You have fulfilled the things that God has for you. It's easy. You, when the Bible, these old mothers said that they, they ready to go home, they said that because they had accomplished everything that needed to be accomplished. Mm -hmm. folks, folks who ain't ready to die ain't going to tell you they ready to die. They're going to be trying to buy for some time. they buying time. But when you fulfill your assignment, you have peace with yourself and you have peace with God. So you say, God, come on and take me. There's nothing left for me here. I have done everything I was supposed to be. I was, uh, done everything I was supposed to do. So I'm at peace now. Come on and take me. And they're ready to go home. But those of us that haven't fulfilled our obligation, fulfilled our purpose, we ain't ready to go. We still try to buy some time. God, can you add 10 more years? God, can you give me, can, can, can you just give me five? Can I buy five? Let me, let me buy some. Because we want to stay here. Why? Because we know that we have not done what we have been called to do. Don't let him catch you. I'm prepared. Because if he does, you know the reason why I don't believe that God would give us more time for those of us who are asking for more time? He said, you ain't did nothing with the time again. If you missed it, up, you'll just take the time up too. But what you do have is the opportunity that if you have not been using your time that God has given you wisely <coughs> and fulfilling your purpose, why are you yet? Why that yet? Breath in your body. Start fulfilling your purpose. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on, let's go to the Lord and have fun. We'll get to this stuff next week. I'm going to need with. Okay. Yeah, we get to this next week. But I want, I want, to, I want you to understand this day. When the people of God begin to understand their purpose, we're going to be, begin to command a whole lot of things. I heard someone say this, is that, that we in churches, we go going to conferences, we go going to conventions, we go going to summits. We have a program in church while the world uh, at the White House, at, 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 at Supreme Court, at the governor's place, at the mayor's office, pushing their agendas while the church is still on the inside discussing the issue. Mm. The world is pushing their agenda. My, my. That's why we got to understand what our purpose is. Our purpose is not to be here inside this building. Our purpose is outside these four walls. Mm -hmm. Two per 7% of in the United States American population are homosexuals and lesbians, 7%. That means that 93% of everybody else was in the closet, Why? while 7% marched to the Supreme Court. And once, once they were able to get their rights, now we come out of the closet, we upset about it, we angry about it, we want something done. Mm. We had an opportunity a long time ago oh, okay. to get something done, but you chose not to. Why? Because you rather be in church fussing over your name not being called. My, my. Yeah, Nobody gave you a vote of thanks. Jesus. Nobody acknowledged you while you had to argue. They out there pushing their job. My God. That's a sign that you don't know what your purpose are. Once you know what your purpose is, then you are operating with purpose. You still got an obligation, you got a responsibility as people of God. 
to do right by God. Don't die, fool. God wants you to get out of everything he's going to put in you. And if you allow him to do it with his help, you will fulfill every assignment that God has placed upon your life. It's not over until God says it's over. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. All right, come on into the Lord and clap and pray. Well, 